Greetings and welcome back to 50 Shades of Beige. This video will be the last video about the Aqua Elite 240 V3 unless you all have any special requests from me. As promised, we're gonna go ahead and do a quick teardown. So let's get right into it. This is a blind teardown, by the way. So I've never taken this particular style of cooler apart. I'm not sure what we're gonna run into, but uh, what do you say we find out? First things first, we gotta get these fans off. So let's go ahead and do that. By the way, if you are intending to uh, take the screws out of your radiator, be sure to keep them because they are not necessarily universal. <laughs> I can tell you from personal experience, it's real easy to lose them. We're gonna switch to a bigger driver here just to make this a little faster. My uh, powered screwdriver has been broken now for several months. I really need to buy a new one. But my current role, I no longer do hardware repairs at work for my day job. So it doesn't really make sense for me to buy one. But I'll tell you, when you gotta undo 50 screws, sometimes you get a little beige rage going. You know what I'm talking about. And we'll put that over there. So why I'm taking the fans off is I'm looking for a drain and refill hole. A lot of times these AIOs don't have a drain or refill hole and you just have to take them apart from the bottom. But sometimes you get lucky and you'll see two little nubs. In this case, it doesn't look like uh, we're gonna get quite that lucky. So let's go ahead and grab our bowl. I stole some Pyrex from my wife. She's not here to defend the kitchen, so. Sorry, honey. Let's go ahead and figure out what size Torx this is. Ho ho ho, we got lucky on the first try. A T3, so if you're taking this apart alongside me, you'll want a T3 bit. My El Cheapo iFixit driver. Also bear in mind, not that these are under any terrible amount of pressure, but if possible, you wanna do this when this is cold. And usually, there's a little silicon gasket around the outside of here. All right. Oh, there we go. Got a little bit of green. There's our cold plate. We'll see if we can get a good view of that. So if you look up close in the light here, you can see these water channels and this gasket. So what they did is they just did a straight scythe here, which makes sense. Let me see if I can get some good detail for it for you all there. Very tiny, very tiny fins in there, which makes sense. Let's see what we're working with pump wise. Now, I was expecting there to be screws in the bottom, but there isn't. Let's see if we can figure a way to get down to the impeller. Cherry, cherry lady. By the way, if you're working with plastic parts, it's really ideal to use a nylon spudger for this, not a metal screwdriver like I have here. This is not the recommended method to go poking around with plastic parts, but it's what I have on hand, so it's what I'm going to use. I don't see a seam anywhere. Oh, here we go. Here's our seam right in the top. Okay. All right, we've got this bracket off. That just slides in, so we actually don't have a seam. Oh my goodness, does this not come apart? 
Let's try uh Nope. It is not budging. I mean, they had to get the LEDs and stuff in there, right? So this cap should come off. The question is how without cracking it. Let's see. Here. There we go. Oh, I think I found it. It's on the side. Once again, it helps to have the right tools. That's important. <laughs> okay. There we go. So it's just two clips on the side, one here and one there. That is how the top comes off. And this is just an LED diffuser. There you go. I'll set that over there so it doesn't get all over my mat. I'm sure my wife will be very pleased to smell coolant everywhere when she comes home. All right, looks like we've got two tiny screws here, maybe a Phillips Zero. So the next bit, and I apologize if I'm not getting the best angles here, this is really awkward to do while everything's connected. We'll go ahead and pull this off. Be mindful because it looks like the power for the pump and the LEDs is just soldered on here. So you wanna be mindful not to disturb those solder joints too much. I doubt they would rip off, but better safe than sorry with that stuff. We'll put those two screws over there. Let's see here, this should just lift right off. Uh, there we go. There's our pump. Wow. That really is it, huh? Looks like we've got a bunch of uh, a bunch more T3s here for getting to the impeller. So let's go ahead and switch back to our Torx bit. Um, these look to be, uh, these are the same size self tappers as the other ones. So I'm just going to drop them in the bowl with the rest of them. Do as I say, not as I do. If you're going to do this on your own, be mindful, organize your screws, organize your tools, keep track of where you're putting stuff. I happen to be pretty good at remembering, but it's just not best practice. <laughs> all right, let's see here. I have to wash all these flipping screws off now. That was actually a bad idea. Well, we're here now. Okay, so I paused this fast forward here because I came to a realization and this goes back to my previous statement about do as I say, not as I do. Not all of these screws that hold the pump together are the same size. So when you're pulling this apart, if you're gonna do this by yourself, which I don't know why you would, but just in case, be sure to keep track of the screws, which ones came out of which hole, Otherwise, uh, you might not get it back together. I'm pretty good at, at matching that type of stuff up because I've been doing this for a long time. But uh, I don't think that's necessarily a realistic expectation for everybody in the world. All right, there we have it. Here's our impeller. Just a tiny little fella there. It's actually pretty robust, I'm surprised. And then the way this works is, it sits on a magnetic motor that goes on the back side here. And it's got a little, 
it's got a little uh, drive shaft there. So there you have it. There's the insides of the Thermotech Aqua Elite 240 V2. Let's have a look at the PCB. Let's see if we can get an idea of who manufactured this thing. We'll get up close here, focus. So we've got part number EJA PUMP 26 underscore 3 dash 002 V1. That's what's on the circuit board. There's nothing on the back except for the uh, magnets for the motor there. Okay, so I did a spat of Googling here and unfortunately I'm not able to identify this circuit board based on the part number printed on it. So if anybody has any ideas of who might have made this pump, feel free to leave it down in the comments. I'm gonna guess and say this is Ace Attack and maybe Thermalright cut a deal or something with them. This is very similar. The only thing I notice is usually Ace Attack's, um, well not usually, but a lot of the times, uh, Ace Attack's impellers are actually yellow, not, not gray like this. So it might be a copycat or something like that, I'm not sure. Either way, still very interesting. Um, and like I said, I'm just delivering this as promised. Once again, if you take this apart, keep track of all the screws, please, for the love of God. This is going to take me a considerable amount of time to put together now because I was a dummy and I just dumped the screws in the bowl there. Um, I should have realized that there would be different sizes of screws. Um, so do as I say, not as I do. Anyway, that's going to be all for now. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon.